I would say that object animation in my world is bringing inanimate objects to life. It's kind of capturing the essence of a character in an object. If you looked up the term object puppetry in the dictionary, and, uh, there's a good chance you would find the name Libby Wetzel. Or like these guys. In the world of puppetry, <laughs> Libby and her company, <laughs> Lunatique <laughs> Fantastique, are pioneers. I bring objects to life. Well, I don't bring objects to life, but the actors that are in the company bring objects to life by animating them. There'll be anywhere from one to three people, sometimes even four on one object, and they move it in a fashion that gives it breath and weight and a focus. So that there's some part of the object that is the head, if you will, of a character that, that gives it gives us a sensation that it's looking at, in the world, that it's seeing the world around it and responding to it. Yeah. We cue each other through breath. Um, there's also certain movements in the way that we do them, like if you're going to walk, take a breath and then go. So you kind of give you know, a little signal that you're about to walk. Yeah. Then it's also just doing it together for a little while to be able to get into a groove together where mm -hmm. you are but in touch standing. with each other. Mm -hmm. And you know where to put your butt and <laughs> how to stand and angle your body just right so that all of us fit into the same spot. <laughs> and eventually you start to think as the same mind. You do. Through the character. Yeah. So these, these are just um, adorable little shoes, right? And then... At some point, this is what happens to them. That to me was really interesting, was that you could take ordinary objects and evoke something that was really poignant. I mean, this is particularly poignant because it's my dad. This is his brace that he wore for many years. He puts his weight on this standing leg here, and then he swings this leg so it bends. I'm attracted to topics that have to do with silence. And in my family, we had never actually really talked about the fact that my dad had polio and that he was physically challenged. I mean, in my family, we never talked about the fact that my dad limped. And so I see myself as somebody who likes to give voice, but it's a visual voice. It's not a verbal voice. Libby's latest project, produced by the Exit Theater in San Francisco, is a play whose main character, Bresti, is portrayed by a purple bra. Beauty in the Breast is the story of one bra and her experience with breast cancer and her experience of losing a, a breast. And that piece came out of my experience with my friend Zoe who had breast cancer and had her breast removed. And what, what is her experience now and how has that changed her life? The idea of creating character from an inanimate object was something that I had some doubts about. Land way at the end of the table. Way There's something ineffable when things work, where the audience steps across that river that goes between the stage and the audience. She has a, her breast removed, and she also develops a friendship with uh, Gilda, who's a leopard skin bra. And uh, the two of them become friends, and it's, it's their journey. Um, the, the piece itself, I also felt, I really, I wrote it for women. I mean, there have been men have come and seen it and been moved, but it's really absolutely a wash in estrogen. And I was really interested in giving a sort of a soft, less uh, clinical perspective on the disease. Every woman that I talked to said that, that they would want women to know that breast cancer is not a death sentence. I don't think there was a time when objects didn't sort of speak to me. And I wanted to do puppetry and I wanted to do things that I felt could be animated immediately in front of an audience. I would say I'm doing object animation as a form for socially relevant theater and also just for fun.